Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to take a first look at week uh, six of the NFL main slate. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this in three parts. If I remember, I will timestamp this within the, uh, the video. But what we're going to do is first, I'm going to go through the games, kind of game by game, and just give my opinion on who I think is going to look good. Um, just based on what I know about the games and know about the teams. And we talk about process a lot. So I'm going to continue to share my process with you. And this is what I do. Okay, so we're going to go through that. Um, shouldn't take too long. And then we're going to go to the next layer where we're going to take an early look at the projections. So we're going to take a look at my sheets and see if they kind of, you know, match up with what my instincts are. And that would be an interesting thing to, to note. And then the third thing is that we're going to go a little deeper into the weeds and build out and, and build uh, lineups using Saberson um, and kind of try to put it all together. Now, again, it is only Wednesday, um, but this is the process that I use um, even, even right up until Sunday. Now, obviously, I don't have to go through the games individually in my head that much on Sunday because I know what's going on. And by then, I pretty much know the projections, and it's really more about just the lineup build and tweaking. But this is the process, so let's just get to it. So, first thing you'll note is that there's a lot of there's a lot of games that are off the main slate that are have great fantasy potential. So, you, know, you have Dallas playing the Chargers; they're off the main slate. You have the Chiefs playing; they're off the main slate. There's a lot of off the main slate teams that's that are kind of garnering high team totals. So, the actual main slate is not really that juiced with fantasy upside. Um, so, it's something to consider. You know, if, if you don't feel as though your, your plays look that great, it doesn't rate to be that high of a scoring slate anyway. So we'll see. Um, all right. So just instinctively, we're looking at this. So Washington against Atlanta. Okay. This is a, a dome, but as we've learned, I mean, Atlanta is just where fantasy points just go to die. So I, I saw, got suckered into last week trying to, to fade that idea. And I imagine I'm not going to go for that again. Um, so this game is probably going to be a pass for me. Uh, Minnesota, Chicago, you have Justin Fields having a nice resurgence. Um, so I imagine he's going to look pretty good against the Minnesota defense. It's not that great. And you have DJ Moore, who basically is going ballistic. Um, it's kind of hard to dispute that. So uh, I imagine that Fields to Moore is going to make a lot of sense. Um, the, the big injury news this week is Justin Jefferson is not going to play for Minnesota. So what that's going to do, it's going to boost up these top receivers, uh, their projections, I imagine, uh, uh, Addison, Osborne, and also uh, kind of the most expensive of them all, uh, TJ Hawkins. Um, so all three of those guys are going to look pretty good. Um, and, you know, they're also going to be pretty popular. So this game is going to be interesting. Now, I don't know what the weather looks like over there, but right off the bat, this game is probably going to take a lot of ownership. You have fields with, with Moore who've been hot. And then Minnesota with the with the underpriced receivers because Jefferson is out. So this is going to be probably a pretty important target. Cincinnati, Seattle, I guess we're watching the T. Higgins news because we just saw what happened with him out. Uh, the Jamar Chase experience was, was basically un, you couldn't fade that and do anything in, uh, in the main slate last week. So they didn't really move him up in price so much. So I imagine he's going to look really good again um, if, if Higgins is out. Um, if he plays, I don't think Chase is particularly underpriced. I mean, overpriced. So he's still going to look, look pretty good. Um, and then the usual guys from this game, you know, you know where this is going. They're on the Seattle side, Walker, Lockett, Metcalf, you know, certainly look reasonable. And I guess Mixon, once again, is going to look okay. So this, this is a, another game which people are going to want to target. Mix looks like to make perfect sense to me. Cleveland, San Francisco, and San Francisco is a freaking machine. Um, I can't imagine Cleveland scoring much against them, so probably not going to get to any of that side. And on the the San Francisco side, the problem is always the same. I mean, like, they have so many weapons. I don't know who to play. You know, McCaffrey, ninety five hundred, and he just always seems to do it. What does he have? A touchdown, fourteen straight games, something nuts like that. Even Kittle got got his got his act together. He had a huge game. Ayuk, Samuel, I mean, all these guys, but but you can't play them all. Um, I incline to think it's probably a lower scoring game, 
and these guys are secondary targets at uh, for for GPPs uh, and, and not priorities. But we'll see what the projections look like. New Orleans, Houston. Um, okay, so you have Alvin Kamara, who who's essentially resumed his role that he had two, three years ago, where he's getting all the receptions, all the carries, all of everything. Um, and once again, he's probably going to look good at 6,800. I don't really want to play the New Orleans passing game too much. You can always play a one off of Olave or something like that, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe the New Orleans passing game is not so bad. Olave, Michael Thomas only 4,900. I mean, he just really has no depth of target anymore. Um, I don't know. 4,900 is really cheap. <laughs> I'll say that. So, yeah, maybe this makes sense. And then on the Houston side, the same dudes as before. You know, Nico Collins, Tank Dell. Like, if he's in, he's a good price at 5K. And if he's out, Collins is going to look really good at 5,600. So, it's another one. This is not bad, this game. Again, a slate with not a lot of huge totals. I think this one can look okay. Uh, Indianapolis, Jacksonville. So you have, um, what's his name out? Richardson. Um, I don't know if I could do the Minshew thing. Uh, Pittman, 6,300. I don't know. The Jacksonville side, I think Etienne, again, is going to look like a decent play. He did price him up a little bit. And all these other guys, Ridley, Kirk at 5,400 looks very reasonable. Um, it doesn't seem like the type of game that I want, that's going to shoot out or anything like that. So I don't know if it's a game stack or anything. Um, so the other thing to consider on the Indianapolis side, I guess, is that Jonathan Taylor might be is back. So these guys are probably going to split carries, making them both unplayable, I imagine. So again, this game is, just doesn't look like it's going to be that great. Carolina, Miami. All right. So you have Miami that's got a million team total. Um, uh, and then you have Devon A. Chain is out. So now Rashid Moster is uh, Raheem Mostert is going to get, you know, the majority of the work. You do have Jeff Wilson Jr., who might be back. So it's not as if Rashid Moster will get all the work. And not to mention that that, you know, Miami can throw the ball around and not have to rely on him. The other, the other guy that, that Ahmed is good, you know, they sometimes go to him. So, I mean, look at two games ago, three games ago. Um, he definitely got some, you know, got three, three, three attempts and three targets. So it's not like a full on lock. I think most are, and I think he's going to end up being really, really chalky. So we'll see what we do in GPPs. And obviously the receivers just look good every week. I mean, what's Hill 9,300. I don't know if there's a value to get to him. That's the problem. This week. I mean, you almost rather play Chase if Higgins is out or those Minnesota receivers than pay all the way up for Hill. Waddle, cheaper, 7,600. That's okay. Now, on the other side, you have Carolina. Um, Thielen just is kind of the man. Um, and you have a good game script for this. You know, you, The idea is that the Carolina is going to be having to come from behind. So between Thielen and Shark, who could be, you know, he could be the guy at 4K. You know, uh, only six targets and three targets the last two games, but he had 11 the week before. Um, so I think he could be pro probably sneaky here. Let's see if the Mingo has been, been, been let loose here. Yeah, look at the Mingo, six targets, seven targets. Hasn't really had a lot of depth of target, but. Yeah, so these Carolina guys are going to be pretty interesting. New England, Vegas. Vegas, they just have no, you know, innovation on offense at all. You know, that game was so horrible to watch, the, the Raiders-Packers game. Both teams were just miserable. But, you know, Devontae Adams at 8,100, you know, he's probably really pissed he didn't get more targets in, the, in, this, you know, in this last game. Only four targets. Uh, even though they won, I mean, typically when this happens with him, he ends up like whining and and they just go after they then they just feed him. Now again, you have a New England matchup where you know Belichick's been known to try to take the you know, the best player away, but New England man, they are they are in the world of trouble right now. Um, they just lost two straight games by forty, I think. 
And I think Adams can have a, have a big game here, regardless of what New England tries to do. And you have Jacoby Myers, who's getting, you know, going against his old team. And he's the target guy now. Um, so, yeah, I think both those guys are in play against against New England. Um, and I don't know who I could play on the New England side. I mean, they're just, they just have nobody that's doing anything. So, Hunter Henry, 4,400, I suppose. Devontae Parker, 3,500. Ugh. He went back to reality here. Yeah, I don't know what New England's going to do. Just, I guess keep giving it to Ramondre Stevenson. Now, the last game he could throw out because the game was over pretty quickly. But before that, I mean, he was getting most of the work. So maybe maybe Ramondre Stevenson could be a good bounce back play here. Detroit, Tampa. Um, all right, this there could be some points here, I suppose. Uh, you could throw on Tampa nowadays. Again, now the thing is, is we have to see who's playing for Detroit. You know, is Gibbs back? Is Amon St. Brown back? If St. Brown is back at 7,700, he's going to look good. If he's not back, then these same cheapo receivers are going to look just amazing. As will Laporta again at 5,600. If Gibbs is out, Montgomery is probably going to look like a reasonable play at 7,300. Um, if Gibbs is back, I'll probably avoid it. Um, and on the Tampa side, um, I don't really want to play with Shad White, but yeah, I mean, Tampa could have a game here, I suppose, but these guys are all expensive. I'll probably be off the Tampa side. Uh, this game is probably going to be a good one. Uh, this is in the dome. You have, you know, skill guys on the Rams and these, the Rams games have been pretty fast. I suppose um, it's it, again, conditions are good. The only thing on the Ram side is you have two guys over 8K. And uh, it's just very difficult to get to either of them in that situation. You just don't know where the targets are going to be distributed. And just, you know, this is way too expensive. Consider that this game, as opposed to, say, a Jamar Chase game, where he's cheaper than both of them. Well, actually, he's like 8K, and he is certainly the number one guy. Or I'm on St. Brown. If he plays, he's 7,800. He's certainly the number one guy. So, I'm not going to get to these Rams receivers. Uh, what's it? Kyron Williams, on the other hand, he's always in play. Um, he kind of got scripted out. Well, I shouldn't say that. Didn't really get scripted out. They they just kind of decided to go for the pass a little bit more. Um, I guess he's okay. Now on the Arizona side, the Arizona side is sort of interesting. So first of all, you have James Conner, who got moved to the injured reserve list. So the first thing is that which of these running backs are going to step up? Is it going to be Keontae Ingram? Um, I don't know. I mean, we have to check the coach speak. We have to see what they do. Is it going to be the Amari DeMarcado experience? You know, he's the one that took over, you know, the, he, he had him last week, um, 10 for 45, three targets. I mean, it seems though he's the man at 4,900. So he's going to probably project really well. And then again, with Connor out, I mean, just it just increases usage all over the rest of the, the game. So you have Marquise Brown, 5,300. You have Michael Wilson. He had a great game two days ago, two games ago, and last week, not so much. Um, but he'll be in play. Lonzale Moore will be back in play. With Connor out, I mean, that that this is this is usage to go around all over the place. So and considering the uh, the game script where they rate to be behind, I think Arizona's in the dome is going to be. I imagine they're going to look really good. Uh, Philly Jets. Uh, Jets have a pretty good defense, so uh, maybe the Eagles are not going to be that great. You have both these receivers, uh, uh, Antonio Brown, uh, AJ Brown, and Devontae Smith. I think they're both again over seven K, so it's tough to really prioritize one or the other. Goddard, 4,800. He looks good again, I suppose. Devontae Swift at 6,100. He'll look all right. On the Jets side, I mean, Bruce, Bruce Hall. I mean, it's, it's just no joke, man. I mean, this is 22 for 177. Even if you take that 72-yard one out, still over 100 yards. And this is um, this is a, he's going to be the man. I think he's probably a good player at 6K. Not to mention the other superstar, the Garrett Wilson at 6K. So, I think both those guys are are pretty good. Um, as a matter of fact, maybe you could play a cheapo Zach Wilson also. So there are things you could play. Again, just looking through the games. Now that's the first step. 
So maybe I'll do a timestamp. But now let's take a look at the projections now and see if that kind of justifies what I looked at. So this is through yesterday. I don't even think it has the Arizona stuff yet. So that's going to be probably whatever. As a matter of fact, let's see what what let's see who they have in Arizona playing running back even. Yeah, they, I don't even have anybody. <laughs> oh, they have the Emmercado. I have him listed. Have him at with only eight fantasy points. So it's got to be more than that. We'll, we'll look into that. So let's take a look and see what we would have. See, at quarterback, it looks as though Joshua Dobbs is like clearly not the number one option, which is what I kind of anticipated, you know, and it looks as though he's going to be really popular as well. I can't imagine 27%. Um, but anyway, we'll take another look at that later in the week. And then Hertz, Lawrence, guys we mentioned. Receivers, first receiver I see is Tyreek Hill. Devontae Adams we mentioned. Jamar Chase we mentioned. There's the first Marquise Brown sighting. Adam Thielen, we mentioned him. Let's try to so let's sort these by um, by position. Uh, it looks as though there's going to be no real big chalky defense. So the running back, Kamara, looks good. Jacobs, a lot of these guys look really close, which is interesting. Let's see, like tight ends. Zach Ertz, talked about him. And then Tyree Kill, Adams, Chase, Marquise Brown. So these Arizona guys just kind of keep showing up. So I imagine that's what we're going to get to the most. Uh, next thing we look at is the stacks. These All these things are available on TrueDFS. So let's rank these according to um, the right side, according to modified stack value. And you'll see by a pretty decent margin, Arizona, you know, Dobbs, Marquise Brown, Zach Ertz, um, which I kind of, you know, Kind of looked at earlier. And I also see them being really popular. We'll just see. I mean, something's got to be well, they can't be this popular. But we'll see. Uh, then Miami, Cincinnati, Vegas. That's interesting. We can see that coming. And then on just on raw points, sure, Miami, Philly. So here's the Rams. So problem is, is that how are we going to get the value out of these guys? Unless you want to play, say, 2 2 at well. Um, so it looks as though, again, you know, before we run the stuff, it's going to be probably somewhat Arizona um, will be the top play. But let's let's see. I mean, you know, it's interesting to see what happens. So let's pull up Saberson. And what we're going to do is we are going to upload the projections. This is as of Wednesday morning. So it's not really that big a deal, but this is the process. We will, um, we're going to do this kind of by hand. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this strictly for the Millie Maker. Um, so we uploaded the projections. And um, yeah, I don't know why all these Arizona guys are so popular. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Um they're projecting just so well. And this is this is kind of nuts. I imagine this is going to come down a little bit, but right? this is this is the process, right? So, so according to these numbers, I mean we're just gonna get, I know we're just gonna get all the Arizona. But let's just take a look. So let's uh let's let's rebuild the lineups right now. I uploaded everything. We already put in our contest sims uh settings, and again, the way we do that. And the Millie Maker, 200, only 207,000 people we expect, 35% for first. And we also do the big Millie Maker, which is like five to 555. And we did those settings. And then we're probably going to play the Power Sweep also. Let's take a look.
All right. So not surprisingly, pretty much all of the Arizona, like a hundred percent Arizona. I mean, there's probably something wrong with these projections. Can't be this this good. Um, we'll run the contest sim. I think it's a Saberson projection that's 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 causing this because I mean this is a I mean, thirty points. I can't imagine that holds. So just kind of to see. Oh, you see, I have a 21% projection. So I think that makes a little more sense. Anyway, um, we'll sort this by the big, no, the millimaker risk adjusted ROI. And it looks as though the majority of the stacks would be Arizona, um, but not like 100%, be 30%. And then the other ones you're getting to some of uh, are Jacksonville, Seattle. Those are the main ones. Um, and as far as what types of stacks, QB plus two is, is the majority of them. And uh, yeah, so I guess that kind of represents the early look for this week. And that's the process by which I would go ahead and build my lineups. And what I would do is I would just kind of like insert these into my lineups as I see fit, make a couple of changes. Like maybe I would go change the min uniques too, which is a kind of a good thing to do. Um, give yourself a few more outs, so to speak. But this lineup looks really good, by the way. This one fades Moster. Plays Seattle with the Cincy runbacks. Yeah, this one looks really good, actually. But these Arizona guys look really, really attractive. Do you know Smith is questionable? I didn't even know that. Uh, but this one's going to be the logical one, too. You know, Dobbs with Ertz and Brown. Dobbs with Ertz. I mean, Ertz is going to be really popular. I would imagine Jacksonville. It's a thing about GPPs and, and uh, NFL, DFS. I mean, all your lineups look so good <laughs> before they start. All right, that'll do it uh, for the early look. Uh, we'll be back with, you know, more content throughout the course of the week.